Hey, I'm Luke, and I'm gonna attend Ayahuasca Church. <laughs> Ayahuasca is a psychedelic tea from the Amazon rainforest. Since the 1930s, ayahuasca churches have popped up all over North America, some of questionable legitimacy. I'm attending a two-day ceremony by a local ayahuasca church that my girlfriend Mia has been part of for two years. Is this legal? This is not legal, no. So you trust these guys? Totally. Ayahuasca can bring you euphoric experiences of heaven, or it can send you to dark, monstrous places of seemingly infinite layers of hell with no sense of time or escape. So why would anyone drink this? Well, everyone lives a story. Your story developed in your upbringing and determines your unconscious beliefs about yourself. Maybe your story is like mine, the story, I'm not enough. You subconsciously believe you are not enough for the career, the partner, the healthy habits you desperately desire, and nothing can fill that void, leaving you feeling empty. Believe it or not, I was a DJ for over 10 years. And if I'm being vulnerable, looking back, it was partly motivated by a desire to fill myself with experiences I felt I couldn't be happy without. And guess what? It didn't work. Ayahuasca is one of the most powerful psychedelics that exists. It has transformed countless people's lives for the better. When taken intentionally, psychedelics can help you heal trauma, grow spiritually, and make really deep shifts inside yourself, including changing limiting beliefs. A word of caution, if you have a family history of schizophrenia or psychosis, then ayahuasca can aggravate those those conditions. Ayahuasca can get very intense, so you need to know what to expect. I had something inside of me that had to come out. Will I go crazy? Will I be teleported to a hallucination field infinite hellscape? Or will I have a spiritual awakening? We're getting ready right now. All white. Yeah, we're on our way to the hidden location. We're here. We're about to go in. I'm feeling the nerves more. This is what Ayahuasca Church looks like. Okay. First, out of respect for privacy, I'm not going to show any shots that could identify people. So here are clips of Ayahuasca Churches in Brazil. Like in this clip, you see there's a table in the middle where the head of the church and the musicians sit at. Then there are chairs on either side that separate the men and the women. And behind the chairs, there's an area called the healing area with yoga mats and buckets for purging. It's in the healing area that I'll have a powerful experience on day two, but more on that later. And the bathrooms are around the corner. It's in the bathroom where I'll do private recording. <laughs> now with my trusty pocket recorder, I sat down and spoke to the dude next to me. I really enjoyed my experience a lot when I did it. It was so good. I was going through a, a hard time at that point. Like I went through a divorce. So for me, it was just like, oh my God, I never expected that to ever happen. Right. So I was trying to make, uh, <laughs> understand what it all meant. Right. Because it was so sudden. And not really helped. He seemed level-headed. Overall, I felt like they're all so nice. They're all so nice. Next, I took a look at their book of hymns, which we'll sing from later. I was surprised by just how many mentions there are of Jesus, God, and the Virgin Mary in English and Brazilian Portuguese. With how Christianity historically treated indigenous peoples, the Ayahuasca Church is a very interesting, almost paradoxical mixture of Catholicism with indigenous ayahuasca practices. My sense is it works out because of the Catholic emphasis of the Virgin Mary as mother. This allows the Ayahuasca Church to integrate the indigenous respect for the earth with Mary symbolizing mother nature, which appears in their hymns. I was starting to realize how churchy this church actually is when the ceremony began with a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let us go into thy kingdom. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The religious prayer felt kind of weird. I've never said that before. But honestly, I was so nervous about the ayahuasca, I welcomed anything that would prime my brain with supportive thoughts. Then we sang songs and drank the first dose of the ayahuasca. Then I snuck off to the bathroom with my last sip. So here it is. It tastes like a very strong, slightly bitter tea, and I actually enjoyed it. First dose, small dose. As I waited for it to kick in, a veteran of the church gave me some advice. He was very nice, but surrender? How intense will this get? I still wasn't feeling the ayahuasca when the head of the church led a meditation. It revealed a lot about their philosophy. Oh, 
intention, real intention, turning it to action. Strong uh, emotional discharge is uh, his trauma. The medicine brings that for you to know, for you to feel, for you to experience, and having enough uh, humility and courage to follow your duty uh, of the healing of your own life. Remember that everything you do, do is wrong. I was surprised by how much of that aligned with secular therapy and meditation. The ayahuasca church wasn't feeling sketchy. For me, the message of humility and courage really resonated. I felt more relaxed, but I still didn't feel anything from the first dose of the ayahuasca. The first dose, he sang a bunch of songs and did meditation, and that was awesome. Now I'm taking the second dose, we'll see how this plays out. Then in about a half hour, my stomach felt off. <coughs> I puked. Purging was rough, so I went to the healing area to rest. Though the medicine was doing something, I couldn't tell if the purging actually did any healing. So it's like getting close to the end of the day today. I feel like I got a very thorough introduction to it. I think I'm more comfortable here. I had a very gentle first day, which is fine. You know, I actually asked for it to be gentle like before I took it at the start. I'm like, please be gentle. <laughs> Day one is officially done. Yeah, for me, no major insights. Apparently the ayahuasca was a little bit lighter. So tomorrow, day two, I'm gonna have a large dose and see what happens. But I didn't know just how intense ayahuasca can get. Day number two, and we are heading out the door to get to the ceremony. I'm feeling confident, I'm feeling pretty good. Let's do this. This is what the vlogging life is like. So stupid. It's like no one cares if you start your car. We arrived and I got to chat with some of the other attendees. People describe the amazing benefits they've had from ayahuasca. Self-love, forgiveness, letting go of shame and trauma, and having a spiritual awakening. You just need to be humble to the power of the medicine and courageous enough to drink it. I became determined. With humility and courage on my side, I will get a large dose and face whatever fears or shame or demons may come up. But then the head of the church made an announcement. So today we want to work with a, with a stronger medicine than yesterday. So people who are used to take less, ask for less. Stronger ayahuasca? I'm used to taking less. Maybe I should ask for less. I decided no. I've spent enough years with this self-sabotaging background feeling that I'm not enough. You can even see it in how I stand. I decided to still get a large dose of the extra strong ayahuasca. I'm ready. Now while I drink the ayahuasca, let me be clear. The point of intentionally using psychedelics isn't to just have a cool experience. The point is to get serious insights that will help improve your sober life. Ooh. But unfortunately, psychedelics are illegal. And that's why I need your help. The US Food and Drug Administration, the organization keeping psychedelics illegal, has over 120,000 subs on YouTube. And that's just not okay. Horrible flavor. So hit that subscribe button right now so we can send a message to the FDA that psychedelics should be legalized and regulated. Then maybe ayahuasca churches like this one can help more people in our fight against widespread mental illness. The ayahuasca was more bitter this time. Then within 10 minutes, the room got brighter. I felt different and I had to get up. <laughs> Though purging was way worse than yesterday, I'm still not sure if that healed anything. And then the visuals began. I'm still fully conscious in here, but like, this is weird. <laughs> um, I'm gonna close my eyes. It's not like very strong visuals. Like it's not like, it's not like hallucinations. It's just like, you see patterns and things that you, your, your brain is like looking for patterns like it normally does, but in, it's like amplified. While the nausea went away, the journey was just beginning. Tucking myself under a blanket, I closed my eyes. Okay, so that really went somewhere. 
As the feeling of my body faded, I went deeper and deeper into my mind. It's super hard to describe, but let me try it. I saw flashes of light and rainbow geometry merging into complex arrangements of animals, plants, and nature. Soon, the area in front of my eyes expanded, revealing an inner space. Here, I witnessed my inner reality. And slowly, a feeling of strength rose up within me. And I could feel it, I could feel it in my uh, being. It was a feeling of, of strength, of trusting, of trusting myself. With this newfound strength, I understood I can transform my inner space. So I expanded it into a huge room. I sat myself on a large throne, seeing far into the distance. I made the walls a deep oceanic blue with jutting gold stars between classic Grecian pillars rising far above. As I sat there, suddenly, it went deeper. Duty and my words started to mean something to me. My decisions and relationships became sacred commitments and I felt the ability to bless things in my life. I realized at my core, I'm connected to something fundamental, something profound, something numinous. I'm not a kid and I'm not just a man either. I'm a man connected to his inner king, rooted in the divine masculine. This is where true power comes from. And I felt the responsibility to use this power to help people. I'm not meant to just heal, I'm meant to be a healer. Like, I'm not meant to just ask questions, I'm meant to answer. In this new way of being, this new mindset, this energy that filled me, something clicked. How could I not be enough? I don't need validation, I validate. I don't miss out, I create. I don't lack. I am. The void has been filled. I'm enough. I left feeling light, clear, and excited to see how my life will change. Okay, so it's over. We've left day two. It was a success. I think, I think I'll be back. I think so, at some point. We'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> Peace. For more on how this ayahuasca journey changed my life, watch my Raw Insights video here. I look like a fryer. <laughs>